Hi, we're back in my garage again to take another look at the um, the reflow oven uh, controller that I built and the improvements that I've made to it since the last time um, that I shot the video. Um, if, you, if you remember in the last video I was complaining a bit during the reflow that there was quite a bit of um, overshoot and undershoot. Basically the algorithm couldn't keep up with the temperature changes in the oven, particularly the heat loss. And I commented that I thought that um, if I insulated the oven then it would probably be a, a bit better. And uh, many of you commented and agreed with that and made your own suggestions. And basically, um, I followed up on all of the suggestions made by um, these uh, your, my YouTube commenters and also the commenters on my blog. And um, the changes have uh, really made a substantial difference. The oven now is really, really good. And so I'd like to shoot another video here just to show you what I've done and how well it performs now. Now, as you can see inside the halogen oven itself, I've um, taped down the, the, the foil insulation with Kapton tape just to make sure there are minimal losses through the sides. Um, the bottom is of course covered as well. Uh, the biggest change I made was um, actually insulating the, uh, the top of the oven. Previously I didn't bother doing that. The top of the oven got very hot. Uh, obviously that meant that um, heat was escaping through it. So I've now insulated the top of the oven with, um, with tape, uh, sorry, with foil and taped it down with Kapton tape. I've just left a little bit of a gap at the side here so I can actually see what's going on inside. It's always nice to you know, see your board while it's reflowing, you need a little viewing window. That doesn't seem to have made much of a difference, that's good. Um, so with that, with that in mind and with the controller and the improvements to the controller algorithm that I'll uh, talk through in a minute, um, it's, I think we should run through another, another session, another reflow session and you can see just how well it's performing now. So one of the main improvements that I made um, since the previous iteration of this controller is the, uh, the refresh rate. Um, the original one, when I showed the demo, was supposed to be um, sampling the uh, temperature every, th every three seconds. And then um, when I went into reflow mode, it was supposed to sample it um, every one second. Now, due to a bug in my code, which was rather embarrassing, it was actually sampling at three seconds always, regardless of where you were. And that's obviously wrong and not fast enough. So um, I change the sample rate to uh, one second for the, um, the main screen here when you're just looking at stuff. And uh, during the reflow period, I've changed it down to a third of a second, so it samples really quickly. And that seems to work well. So let's get started on the um, operation. Now, another before I, I just kick this off, I've actually reduced the, um, the PID parameters that I used. Uh, previously, I had them quite high, and on your advice, I changed them and I'm going to just make sure they're all in, in uh, the correct order. So I want a proportional setting of 10. Let's put that in. Um, integer I'll leave at 1 to prevent ramp up. And most people say you don't, I don't need derivatives, so let's just get rid of that completely. So we're now looking at a proportional uh, setting of 10, integer of 1, derivative of 0. And we can, we can get ready to start the reflow operation. So trying to do this with just one hand obviously because I'm holding the camera with the other so there's the reflow screen ready to go and I'll just press the go button and we'll get it off right the oven started and look how look how well it's tracking now the little green bubble there is just progressing up nice and slow hardly any error and as you'll see the oven hardly needs to apply any power at all very rarely it just applies a little pulse. There you go. These halogen ovens really, really heat up fast. As you can see, we're progressing up the slope here. Errors are very small. And yet all we're seeing at the oven side are just little nudges. Little nudges to take it up the slope. Try and get both in the shot at the same time. You can see it's progressing up nice and nice and well and accurately. So far the oven has not had to put in 100% power at all, as you can see from the power indicator down there, the bottom right. The levels of power it's applying are small. And that's all it needs to do to ramp up through this slope. And this is all because of the insulation really. I mean during my um, testing 
I tested each of these modifications separately. The insulation came last. It was the insulation on the lid that made a huge difference. As you can see, we're still just applying very small nudges to the output from the halogen lamp there. It's a 1.2 kilowatt um, halogen lamp in a 12 litre oven. You can get these ovens on eBay for you know about 25 quid or something. <clears throat> Off it goes. Another significant change I made was to change the um, linearity of the, out of the output percentage. You can read about this on my blog, but basically um, since the, the sine wave uh, of the mains, you know, the main supply is not, it doesn't have as much power at the start and end as it does in the middle, I um, applied an integration formula to it to, to make the um, power response non-linear throughout the curve. You can read the, about the formula I used there on the, um, on, the, on the blog. But all of these improvements put together have made a really significant, significant um, improvement to the way it tracks. I mean, this is a really high-res phone. It's like thousands of pixels in all directions. So you can see every little, every little bump that it makes. But it's tracking really, really accurately. So pleased with that. Let's see what happens when it gets to the to the uh, ramp up stage. This is where the solder is melted, and we're going into the re what's called the reflow uh, um, stage. You can see the power there. It'll need to ramp up here. We still don't. We still haven't had to go anywhere near 100%. Look at that, brilliant. 60%, 60. I think I saw 65%. The oven's just nudging the power again as we go over the top. Now here comes the problem. I can't vent heat from this oven, obviously. It can only cool um, naturally. So I'm going to have to lift the lid to vent heat. Let's see how, how well it loses heat naturally first. Oh! We had a, a, a fail there, but it recovered. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point I'll make that, um, earlier. It's losing heat naturally quite well, but it's not going to be able to keep up with the cool down curve. As you can see, it's going off there. So what I'll do is just lift the lid. Now, you don't need to see me doing this, but you can watch the effect on the, on the temperature. Drastic fall. Now, obviously, a professional reflow oven is going to be able to, re going to, be able to vent heat as well as um, apply heat. Um, I can't do that, so I'm just lifting the lid, and there we go. And basically, I'd be done by now, and I'd be happy with that. Now, if you saw during the uh, last stage of the reflow, there was a little alert message that said um, temperature alert short to ground. Now uh, we've completed the timing. And that's probably happened because if you look in here, I've got a not very uh, clever arrangement for the um, temperature probe. I haven't actually, they're, they're very close together inside there. I'm going to have to just space those apart a bit further. I think they shorted. Um, now that's okay, or it could be because it's touching the metal there inside the probe, which should, the probe should be hanging. But either way, there was a little error in, uh, when we went through the curve, but it only lasted about a third of a second um, because the, the program that I've written recovers from these errors. If it, if it receives um, an error response from the, um, uh, from the thermocouple, then it will display it on the screen and then it will continue regardless, you know, hoping that it will recover because you might be in the middle of a session. The last thing you want to do is abort when you get an error. You want to try and recover. So you saw then that it got an error, it did recover, we carried on, no problems. And basically that's telling me to just look at my um, setup for my probe to make sure I've screwed it in properly and make sure that it's not um, shorting, not doing what it is doing, which is shorting to ground at the moment. Okay, so I hope you, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree that the, the progression there across the curve is very, very accurate and the um, insulation has made a huge difference. So I'd just like to, like to sign off by saying thanks to everybody who commented on my earlier YouTube video and who commented on the blog to offer the suggestions for improvement because it really has helped. And I'm very pleased with what I've got now. And that's all. Thank you very much.